have with me Peter Varghese, who is the Chancellor of the University of Queensland, which is in Brisbane, Australia. Hello, Peter. How are you today? Hi, Pamela. Very well and delighted to join you. And what were the most um, significant challenges that you and the VC faced uh, throughout the pandemic? What were the top two or three things that you had to address? Well, it's, it's certainly been a challenging period, Pamela, and um, like uh, many other institutions in uh, the international sector, uh, we had to come to grips with firstly the closure of the Australian border. The first thing we had to do was to frantically put everything online uh, and uh, we did that uh, in a very, very short period of time at the beginning of the academic year last year. Uh, uh, in our case in, in UQ, um, we were lucky in terms of our international student cohort in that we uh, saw a very large number of students enrolling online uh, from offshore. Um, Peter, can we just turn our minds to your experience as the Secretary of the um, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade for a moment? Can you just highlight for us uh, what the impact has been on Australia trade? Yeah, so, so I, think, um, I think the thing about COVID for the most part, although not exclusively, is that it has accelerated trends that were there before. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we can certainly see that uh, on the economic front. So even before COVID came along, uh, you were seeing a slowing in globalization. You were seeing an increase in protectionist sentiment. Uh, you were seeing um, a greater instinct for self-reliance appearing in the economic policy settings of a number of countries. Um, the two years of COVID have been two years of uh, significant decline in economic growth. I mean, uh, Virtually every country has dipped um, significantly uh, on their GDP. Uh, Still working on the transformation, dealing with the pandemic, looking for growth. Um, the bandwidth is getting stretched enormously. I've heard a lot of business leaders uh, say and point the finger at government looking for leadership on the big strategy that's going to you know, help turn this thing around. I'm wondering what you think about that, whether you think business can rely on government to provide that strategic direction or should business step up and provide more uh, you know, financing and ideas and people to support that initiative? Well, I, I don't think um, business can leave the field <coughs> entirely to, to government uh, and um, the post-COVID world kind of cries out for um, a serious strategy for repositioning or at least positioning more effectively Australia for a very different uh, international outlook. I think the big question for Australia now on the economic front is um, how do we um, find a consensus to return to a reform agenda which can strengthen our resilience and our ability to operate in uh, a different international environment. What's the mechanism for that, Peter? I mean, how do you get business to want to come to the party? What is the, yeah. you know, the vehicle that you use um, to find this, achieve this consensus? Yeah, so, well, I, I think, you know, the way in which business itself organises itself is going to be, is going to be uh, important. Um, I think um, uh, getting business in Australia to take a more longer term view uh, is something we need to really try and achieve. On that note, a couple of years ago when you were um, senior advisor to the Prime Minister, who at the time was Malcolm Turnbull, you were asked um, to use your um, experience as ambassador to India to um, uh, publish, uh, to, to research and publish a report on Australia's opportunities with India from a business point of view. So could we just tap into that um, experience and ask you what were the major findings of that report? My kind of main conclusion was that there was no other single market globally that had more growth opportunities for Australia than, uh, than India. 